Hello folks, this is Sula speaking. You're listening to another video for Teamfight Tactics. In this video, we're going to be looking at one of the champion hero augments or champion specific augments. This one that specifically plays through Galio, turning Galio into a carry and making Galio the focus of the team. So a spoiler alert as far as what augment we're going to be getting. Now, we are still on the release patch of set 12, and even though set 12 looked super promising, I really enjoyed this on the public beta environment. Um, the release patch has just been horrible, and, <laughs> and I don't really have any other way to put this other than that it has been a disaster of a release patch. I've actually been away on vacation for a good portion of it. This is after I got back, um, and I was glad to be away. We are, By the way, we're going to get the overachievers uh, portal, which means that more powerful charms show up earlier in the store. This one doesn't have much effect on the gameplay in my experience. Doesn't really change things too much. So as I said, it's been a really bad patch, and the big problem is just uh, it is a two-cost reroll patch. Two-cost reroll, and specifically Syndra. Uh, it is not balanced. It is a very, very unbalanced patch. Uh, Syndra has just disgustingly good stats, and Syndra being so strong has completely warped the metagame because it turns out that um, Kastan is also too strong and Kog'Maw is also in a strong position, if not quite as strong as some of those other units. But with uh, with Syndra being so absurdly overtuned in this patch, it means that um, everybody's rerolling for Syndra and that unlocks all the other two cost rerolls. So in every lobby, there's someone rerolling for Syndra, usually multiple people rerolling for Syndra. Other people re-rolling for Kastan, other people re-rolling for Kog'Maw, and because all these units are overtuned, ridiculously so in the form of Syndra, uh, you just, you can't really play anything else. Like, I, we've done some of these double-up games where I have tried to just, like, go to level 8 and play a board based on 4 and 5 costs. It just doesn't work. You take way too much damage in the early game from the re-rollers, and you don't outscale them. Like, um, I had a game where... I put together a board that was 105 gold cost, and it lost to a Syndra board that was 75 gold. Like, a 105 cost board lost to a 75 cost board. And, like, that should just never happen, because I had a board full of 4 and 5 cost units that were all 2 starred, and I lost to 2 cost units. It's just ridiculous in this patch. So, I'm not having a lot of fun. Um, I really wanted to enjoy this patch, but it's just terrible. All right, here we go. Deja, Deja Vu is what this is. Is called gain a galio your strongest galio has plus three range and gains 15 mana and six ability power on each attack his ability deals 125 percent more damage but no longer stuns so this effectively turns galio into a carry it's pretty similar to the shen ethereal blades augment from the previous set from set 11 you uh, have a unit that's normally a tank and uh, you want to itemize largely for attack speed most important item is to get a Rage Blade, and Galio just becomes the main carry of your team composition. Galio, of course, also a two-cost unit. Uh, his traits are Portal plus Vanguard plus Mage, and uh, we'll be looking to play through the Galio. So this one is not as strong as some of the others. I think that this augment that I took has like an average placement of like 4.5 in the data. So it's not like ridiculous. It's not like crazy overtuned or anything like that. But uh, it's a little bit different. I wanted to play through this just because I thought it would be fun to try something different. And uh, I should be able to have better luck finding the Galios because it's a two cost unit. If everybody's taking Syndras and Cassidens and Kog'Maw's out of the pool, then it should become a little bit easier to find the Galios as well, or at least that's what I'm thinking in this game. Uh, I am paired together here with Headwinder, and Headwinder, at least at the start of the game, thought he was going to go for the only viable one cost reroll build, which is based on playing through Zoe in the early game, and then kind of switches it up from that and goes into... Uh, eventually into Ari. It's like a Poppy plus Lilia plus Zoe build, and then you try to three-star all of them, and then you try to get Ari as like your secondary carry, because Ari's uh, Arcana benefit is that she um, increases. You get additional ability power for your whole team based on how many three-star units you have. So he was opting to go in that direction at first, although Headbinder will later pivot and um, go into playing for Syndra as well. Um, but that's why I was trying to grab Zoe's and Poppies for him here in the early game. All right, so the basis of playing this team composition based around Galio is you want to get a lot of attack speed on him. So you really want to Rage Blade because 
Again, he gains ability power on each auto attack. As I said, he gains five ability power on every single auto attack. So you want to stack up a lot of attack speed. So Rage Blade is pretty mandatory on him. And then on top of that, other things that synergize well with attack speed. So it's good to get like a Giant Slayer is quite good on him as well. Uh, you can build Static Shiv and it's not terrible on him. I actually have the tier, so I thought Static Shiv might be a possibility. And uh, on top of that, it's also nice to get a Gunblade because he will also be healing the front line as he's using his ability at the same time. So Gunblade tends to be pretty good as well. You don't need to worry about Armor Pen because he deals magic damage, so that is not an issue. But getting Magic Resistant Shred is very nice to have. So I would love to get, if I, can't, if I don't get a Static Shiv on him, I would really like to get an Ionic Spark because Galio is going to be hitting the front line. He does not have the ability to punch through and hit the back line. He's going to be firing at tanks, so it's very important to get some Magic Shred on the board. When you're playing this board, typically you're also playing a lot of Vanguard. So uh, Galio has the Vanguard trait, and you kind of get Vanguard for free when you're playing him, because again, Galio becomes a carry with this, but he still has his normal traits. He still has Portal plus Vanguard plus Mage traits, so it's very worthwhile uh, when you're playing this to just play through the Vanguard trait and then get a really tanky front line with lots of Vanguards and then play Galio as your damage source behind that. And then in the late game, you can tech in other units. You can just like tech in other AP units in the late game. But the ideal is, uh, since Galio kind of gives you a free rank of Vanguard, to go at least four Vanguard uh, for frontline, and then you can technically go six Vanguard as well, and it's not that bad. Uh, although whether to play six Vanguard or four Vanguard is kind of a question. I will be opting to go um, a, pretty deeply into the Vanguard trait in this game. Now, the item I most want here on the carousel is a rod because uh, that will allow me to make a Rage Blade with the bow I have. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the other items. I have a tear and a glove, neither of which I particularly want here. This is not a build that needs mana because Galio gains, when you have this augment, Galio gains 15 mana per auto attack. So he already casts pretty fast. He really doesn't need like a static shiv or anything like that. Uh, you just want him to attack really as fast as possible so that he's stacking up that uh, 5 AP per auto attack faster. So uh, that's kind of the idea there. I'm still playing some shapeshifters on the front line because that's all I've hit thus far. Headwinder is also going to be kind enough to send the Galio he found over to me. So I am going to try to play into Vanguard, um, but for the moment I still have these. I, I had a random Nico um, from the start of the game, so I'm going to continue to hold that. And I could opt to level here, but I'm not sure that there's really anything I could put in. I would have really like to get to 20 gold here if I could, but I don't see an easy way to do that because I'm on Warwick pair, I'm on Galio pair, I'm on Elise pair, and I don't want to sell the Elise just yet. And then I have found a Blitzcrank as well that I'm going to need if I'm going to look to play the four... Um, if I'm going to look to play the four, uh, what do you call it, the four Vanguard. All right, now I'm up against someone who is going to be a Syndra player in this lobby, and uh, they have taken Trade Sector, so it's very obvious they're going to reroll for Syndra. But they've already gotten five Eldritch in super early, and uh, that's just super strong in the early game. One of the other problems with Syndra is uh, you can build her in a lot of different ways, too. So it's not like Syndra can only be played in one comp. In uh, Right now on the various stat websites that keep track of the stats for TFT, you, uh, there's actually three different Cinder compositions that are in the top five. So yes, out of the five uh, best performing team compositions, Three of them involve Syndra, so one of them is a Shapeshifter Syndra, and that's kind of the most common one that you see, is people just playing Shapeshifter or Syndra. Uh, in that case, you're going to grab uh, the the um, Elise early on, and uh, also pick up the, uh, what are the other early Shapeshifters? Uh, also would like to get Shivana, and typically people would try to reroll for the, uh, the Syndra plus Cassiopeia, who's the other Encanter in that team composition, and then also re-rolling for Shivana for frontline, and then later, I can, later on you can go into like Swain and Nasus and eventually Briar. Uh, so that's one of the more common frontlines. You can also play a Vanguard frontline with Syndra, and then there's also a Preserver frontline for Syndra. That involves running Wukong as the main frontliner, and then also getting uh, teching in the various Preserver units. That one is the hardest to put together, but also caps out the highest as I understand it. So three different Syndric versions um, are in the top five played comps right now. And then I believe the other ones are a Kog'Maw Nunu reroll comp and then a Cassidy and Multi-Strikers reroll comp. So it is five different two-cost reroll comps are the top five performing comps on TFT right now. It's, uh, it's pretty insane. So anyway, I've been able to get the four Vanguards in. I'm pretty happy with that. Now I'm not exactly sure what else to play over here because uh, aside from that, look at my uh, look at my other traits in here. One out of three Eldritch, one out of three Frost, 
one out of three honey mancy. Like I can't really put in another unit in order to get another trait in play at the moment. So it's a little bit awkward here. I would uh, actually like to have another secondary carry to go along with the Galio. But for right now, it's just a whole bunch of tanks and then the Galio is my setup at the moment. But I would definitely like that. Now I'm gonna get a sword here, which is okay, but not amazing. Sword could be um, Giant Slayer, sword could be uh, giant, what was it? Uh, Gunblade, also pretty good here. And then now I'm, and then I get another tier. I was like, oh man, these items are not what I want. At least I can get to 40 gold, but I'm like, I mean, this suggests making a Shojin or a blue buff, but it's just not really what I'm looking for here. It's really not, and I need to play another unit. At least there is a Rumble in my shop. I can't remember if I remember to pick this up. I definitely should grab the Rumble because I need more Vanguards here. And, okay, I gained the shop. Re yeah, I actually went past that. I should definitely have picked up the Rumble there because he's another Vanguard and I do need to play at least four Vanguards, if not six Vanguards. Um, so anyway, I'm going to use my free rerolls here. Didn't really hit a whole lot. I definitely should have picked up the Rumble and then that would have been helpful there. So uh, I'm a little at a loss as to what the next unit I should play on my board is because like I have the four Vanguard, but it's a little bit unclear to me what else you play after this. I thought maybe Mage trade to get in, but I'm not sure that that really matters that much because when you play Galio with this carry augment, he's not really playing through his ability. He's pretty much just playing like an on-hit attacker from League of Legends. It's pretty much just his on-hit um, extra ability. Uh, he's not really doing that much. I mean, it's not bad. Like he, he deals additional magic damage when he gets his ability off, but it's like not that important. So really we just want attack speed. And as I said, I'm not quite sure what trait is too good to play here. It's a bit of a shame I can't get pyro trait in because that would actually be pretty nice. But um, pyro plays through Shapeshifter and Bastion front lines. It doesn't play through Vanguard, so it doesn't synergize there. Now there is the option for this Vanguard Crown. I did think about taking this. That would make it very easy to play six Vanguards, and then I could drop one of the crummy Vanguards as well. I think that would have been a good option here, so I definitely was thinking about that. I was looking at the various options, and I was leaning towards picking this one. I don't think it's Prismatic Ascension. Even though this is a bit of a stall comp, I don't think it's that, because I'm not sure that I'm that tanky enough. I'm looking through, and then I see there's Pandora's Items 3, Ignore anger issues, it's really bad in this patch version. Um, so this is items on your bench are randomized. I also get a random radiant item. Now, I almost never pick this one, but um, my items on my bench were just so bad that I was like, I really want to reroll these items because I just don't want these. And then I also got a radiant item and I actually get radiant ionic spark, which is just going to be really, really good for my team here. Because remember how I said Galio spends a lot of time hitting tank lines. So it's quite good for um it's quite good for me to have that um, magic resistance shred and that's definitely something that i'm looking for in this game so I i'm happy to have that i'll also go ahead and put this sword on here because that could be giant slayer or gunblade which i think are both going to be both be good items here and now i just need the items on my bench to reroll into either tank items for the front line or alternately into uh more bow based stuff for uh the the galio because i definitely need more bow based stuff by the way here's someone else who's playing syndra so i'm gonna beat gonna beat their board but then i get reinforced on and i was like oh man i really kind of wish i did not have to fight two full boards here so unfortunately gonna lose i was not able to win quite fast enough and there is still that team that hasn't lost a round yet which is annoying but i was like trying to get off to a win streak there at least i am having reasonably good luck at finding the galios and i get two cloaks on my bench i was like all right i'll i'll just look to go ahead and make the dragon's cloak i'm gonna scout through the lobby here um, but it turns out that like every single one of these reroll comps is magic damage based. The only one that isn't is the Kog'Maw Nunu uh, team comp. That's the only one that's not magic damage based. Every other reroll comp deals magic damage because Cinder deals magic damage, Cassiopeia deals magic damage, uh, Cassidin deals magic damage, and I do finally pick up the Rumble as well. Like all of these other units deal magic damage. <laughs> so Dragon's Claw has an extremely high priority in the game right now because uh, what do you what do you do if everybody is um, you know dealing magic damage? Well, Dragon Claw is good against that. The problem is Syndra, uh, who's the unit everybody rerolls for, has natural uh, magic resistance shred on her ability. Again, if you are unfamiliar with Syndra, her ability naturally shreds whatever he, she hits, which is again kind of ridiculous for a carry. She both deals damage, deals insane amounts of damage, and also magic resist shreds at the same time. She also is an infinitely stacking champion. The more cast she gets off, the more damage she deals, and uh, that never goes down. Uh, while we've got a uh, minion or a carousel here, I can just go ahead and read 
the description for Syndra because even though I'm not playing Syndra, she's like the dominant video, dominant unit in this game because she is so overtuned in this patch. Uh, so yeah, she, let's see, she, uh, her ability conjures the Rift deals magic damage, 20% magic resist shreds, and it upgrades as its cast. As she gets more cast, the um, enemies adjacent to the target are also shredded and take damage. And for every 30 cast, she creates an additional Rift that deals 35% damage. So um, every 30 cast, she puts more Rifts on the ground. So it's very easy to get her up to like 100, uh, 100 plus casts. At which point in time, I think she's putting four different Rifts down on the ground that all deal very heavy damage and also all magic resist shred. It starts to get ridiculous. Um, this unit is extremely unbalanced, as I've said, and uh, the unit just does everything for you. It literally hit, hits multiple units on the board. Uh, magic resist shreds, deals heavy damage. Like you, you literally get everything you could possibly want when you're playing this. All right, I have been hitting some decent Galios, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, look to reroll for this unit. I actually had two Galios on the board, but uh, they both do not function the same way. You cannot put two Galios on the board and both have them using their new ability. Only the strongest Galio on the board uh, gets that ability. So putting two Galios doesn't work. The second Galio functions like a normal one, so there's not really much point in putting multiple Galios. I am up to five, and Headwinder has found a couple Galios as well. So we're getting closer to the um, the Galio three star. So I'll definitely be rolling here until that happens. And I might as well pick up Rumbles towards that too, because Rumble is the only two cost Vanguard. And if I'm rerolling for Galio and I'm playing Vanguards, I might as well reroll for them as well. Now this person actually had a Zephyr. Like Zephyrs are so rare in the game now because they're only uh, only come out of the support anvils. I was not scouting for Zephyrs, and uh, this person got me with the Zephyr. I think I probably still would have lost that round, but it would have been a little bit closer. I might have been able to have better luck. That is one of the Cassidy boards. Cast and reroll, super strong, almost as strong as Sinjar reroll. It's also quite good for double up because the cast and board, when it wins, it wins very quickly. So it comes over to your board. It's able to reinforce really fast in double up mode. So we've been saying we think that that board is uh, quite good when you're playing double up. All right, anyway, so I'm going to get the second half of the gift round here, and I'm going to go ahead and take this component anvil. Unfortunately, there isn't really what I was looking for here. I was hoping to get another item for the Galio, but there is not. So I will take frontline item. I had the chance to make Bramble Vest here, and I did think about that, but I decided I would want to get the heal cut on my board by getting Sunfire Cape. And I also thought having additional health for um, the Mordekaiser wasn't bad either. Again, I'm still trying to find another unit to put on my board. And eventually I was like, uh, maybe I could play Huey or Ezreal. Huey is probably better because um, I have magic resistance shred, but I don't have um, armor shred. So the fact that Huey deals magic damage and Ezreal deals physical damage, this is probably a little bit better here. But uh, like I said, I'd love to have like another secondary carry to play on this board. Long term, I'd like to play into some of the four and five cost units that are um, magic damage based. But for the moment, I'll slot Hui in here. Hui's not a particularly strong unit in this patch, but we'll go with it. Now that I have the two-star Mordekaiser, though, my board should definitely be stronger, and I'd love to hit three-star Mordekaiser. The problem is this person here, XX Ford, is rerolling for Mordekaisers. They are playing Syndra, and they are just rerolling. Uh, they're doing a straight-up vertical Eldritch version of Syndra, which I don't think is as strong as some of the other versions, but they're going to be taking Mordekaisers out of the pool, and it turns out Mordekaiser, a lot of people are going to be playing that unit. There's a Syndra in my shop, so I will buy the Syndra, and uh, it's pretty much like if you see a Syndra, just insta-buy Syndra in this patch. It, it doesn't really matter if you're playing Syndra or not, just always buy Syndra, because it's always worthwhile to take this unit out of the pool if someone else, because someone else is going to be playing it, and it's just worthwhile to get them out of the pool. Unfortunately, the pool sizes were increased for 1 and 2 cost units in this set. It's one of the reversions from set 10. Set 10 made the total number of units at the cost tiers uh, drop. Uh, and that stayed the same for set 11, but they increased them again for uh, at the lower cost tiers, at one and two cost tiers for this set. So uh, yeah, we're back to having, I think 20, I think it's like 21 or 22 copies of the two cost units. I think it's 22 copies of the two cost units. By the way, there comes over a two-star Galio from Headwinder. Very nice. So we'll definitely grab that. And I'm going to make a bow here. Uh, I also need to sell some of these units that I don't want. And there we go, there's the three-star Galio. So with Headwinder's help, I am able to hit that unit pretty fast. So now that I have that unit, I'm going to look to start leveling here. I want to level and get into some of the better units. Unfortunately, our champion send also only cooled down on this round. It's a shame it didn't cool down one round earlier on the 3-7 instead of 4-1. So I'm able to send another Syndra over to Headwinder. Remember, he did pivot into playing Syndra himself. But I was able to get the three-star Galio, and that's definitely going to help a good bit. As I said, the fact that everyone is rolling for two-cost units means it's easier for everyone to hit 
the two cost units. And there's enough of them in the pool that um, even being contested doesn't necessarily mean you, it's like you can't hit. So like there's enough Syndra's now that there's what, like 20, I think there's 22 of them in the pool. That means that two people can three star Syndra. Three people can't, but two people can. Uh, because that's only 18 and there's still four more in the pool. So uh, they definitely made it a little bit uh, easier to hit this. And now we have our last one here and we get another um, Radiant one here. I really wish this was not Radiant. Uh, and I really thought about taking New Recruit as well. I thought that that might not be bad, but I've heard that the support golem is really overpowered in this set. So I decided I would try that one out. I've ended up getting Moonstone Renewer and Virtue of the Martyr, which grants shields and grants healing. These are two of the weakest support items, unfortunately. As you see, someone hit three-star casting over there. So um, even though this augment is supposed to be really strong, let me just look it up in the data real quick to see what this one is uh, is scaling at right now. I believe that all the go Golem ones are a little bit overtuned. So let's see, I'm gonna look this up, Prismatic. The Golem one. Okay, this is the top performing uh, prismatic one in the game. Uh, top performing prismatic augment statistically in the game. So it, there's every reason to take this on like a numerical basis. Uh, as I said, support Golem 2 is the best, is the strongest prismatic emblem in the game. The problem is the actual items that I got are some of the weaker support items. Let me just look right here. Well, actually Moonstone Renewer is supposed to be pretty good, but uh, the other one is not. Virtue of the Martyr is one of the weakest ones. So anyway, I guess Moonstone Renewer is pretty good. Um, and I've been putting the, I'm going to put the Golem in the back because that way the Golem will stay alive longer. I want the Golem to stay alive so the Moonstone Renewer keeps shielding me and the, um, what's the other one called? Virtue of the Martyr keeps healing me. Yeah, so it's better to put this unit in the back line, but I definitely could have gotten something bigger. Could have gotten something like Needlessly Big Gem, which is like the strongest one of all. Um, which causes your whole team to deal bonus damage every second it's alive. Also would have been super nice to get something like a Zeke's or a Chalice, because that would have given attack speed or ability power to Galia, which would have made the ability even faster. Um, so those would have been nice. As I said, um, I think I was right to take that augment. I got maybe a little bit unlucky in terms of what I actually um, saw on there. Anyway, so I'm just looking to level right now. I need to get to level eight because I, I need to play Tom Kench to get up to the six Vanguard. You can see I have, um, what is it, Swain in there right now for Frostrate, but Frostrate's not really that important. I just needed something else to put in, and I figured that was the best. I mean, again, all my other traits are like synergies that are one out of three. I guess I could have put Sugarcraft in, but Sugarcraft's not going to do anything unless I dive deeply into the trait, and I'm not going to do that here. Um, so I, what is it? I have like one out of three Eldritch, one out of three Honeymancer, one out of three Mage, one out of three Portal. Like, that's not going to do anything. So I might as well just put in Frost Trade and get some minor benefit from it. Anyway, we're going to win against that board, and that was the team that was uh, win streaking all through the early game. They went like the first eight rounds of the game without losing, but uh, they started to fall off now, and one of them took the Golden Egg, which is a very greedy thing to take. So uh, they're going to have to try to open up that egg, and if they keep losing rounds, it could start to get dicey. I had the Golden Egg as an option too, but we were not in a position where I could take that. That is a completely blank prismatic augment uh, until the thing hatches, and we were, with us being at 50 health, that did not seem wise. All right, so um, it's my chance to go ahead and pick something. There is a spatula here. Um, I just like, all right, well, you know, the spatula, there's not a ton of things I want to make with the spatula, but I think I can make something with it, and I think that's better than the other options here. So I thought about it. I mean, I could have taken the Tom Kench off the emblem, off the uh, portal as well, and that might not have been too bad, but I decided I'd take the spatula, and uh, ultimately I decided I would try to go towards Eldritch and try to make an Eldritch emblem because I want to play Nami on this board later on. Nami will give me another source of magic damage, and Nami's also a mage. I'd actually like to play Nami plus Nora later on, and if I play Nami on this board plus the Mordekaiser, uh, that gives me two out of three Eldritch, and then I can have three Eldritch by putting in uh, by making an Eldritch emblem. Uh, it is, of course, kind of trivial for me to be able to make the um, emblem because I have prismatic, I have the uh, Pandora's items. I can always reroll the components into something else, so I just need to get a belt in order to re-roll into that. It would also be really nice to get a three-star Mordekaiser. I do think that that would help quite a bit here on this board, but uh, for the moment, I only have four of them, and I do need to be leveling. Now, this is a person playing a Cinder board. I actually think I might be able to beat this person's Cinder board, but um, I get reinforced on extremely fast. I'm pretty sure I can't beat both of these boards. <laughs> My Galio is strong, but not that strong. So that's unfortunate, because I was on a pretty good win streak there, but uh, it is double-up mode, and... Uh, yeah, one of those other boards was just able to come over and uh, jump on my board a little too fast. 
All right, I am going to take the Minor Wish because I'm planning on, I get a, uh, I end up spending one gold to get a three gold Katarina, so that was a plus. But the other reason I want to buy these is I just want to get charms because I'm planning on going into Zareth later on. The suggested build that I saw for Galio was uh, play six Vanguards and that picks up Tom Kench. And then in addition to Tom Kench, you play the Zareth and then Zareth gives you another source of damage on the board. And you can also slot in Nami as well, as I said. So that's the hope there. Uh, I am still running some units on this board that I don't care about. Like the Swain can come out. I really don't care about Swain and Frostrate. And the Huey can come out. Uh, what I could do, can do is put AP items that I hope to put on Zareth later on on the Huey if I would get them. Uh, Headwinder was also able to take a Zareth off that carousel. We were talking about it when we uh, had that carousel. He he didn't mind taking the glove that was on the Zareth, and he was like, all right, I'll just take the Zareth and send it to you, uh, because that way I'll be able to play into Zareth, and then I just need Tom Kench to get Arcana trait. So anyway, my board definitely feels like it's pretty strong. I, I've won every round here on stage four, except the round where I was you know reinforced on, and it was a 2v1. So I think my board is reasonably strong here. I am concerned that this build does not cap out super high, uh, the build definitely needs to get to like two star Zareth and then two star Nami and two star Nora um, to cap out in the late game. So that's why I'm trying to rush to level nine because I want to play some of these units. And like, it just, the other problem is it doesn't really play into some of the other strong units in this patch. Like, I, I have the Karma here. I'd love to play into Karma, but there, there's not really a good way to get Chrono on the board. I mean, I suppose I could play Vex for a Mage. I could do that. I could play Vex uh, for a Mage and then also play Karma. So I guess that's also a possibility as well. But uh, I was looking and hoping that I could find Nora in this game instead. And now I'm also going to try to get one more item on Galia. I could make red buff, but as I said, I think I'd rather have Giant Slayer. Giant Slayer has a really high prayer. And there, by the way, there we're going to get the... Uh, there, we're going to get the Giant Slayer. Uh, and I'm hoping to get a belt here. There we go. That means I can make an Eldritch Emblem. Very nice there. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and take, keep taking some of these. And by the way, there is a Nora and there's a Tom. So I was like, oh, awesome. Okay, well, let's do that. We'll put in the Nora over this. And let's go ahead and make that Eldritch Emblem. And then now I just need to find a Nami. Uh, we'll put this on you. you. You can actually come off the board. But if I can just find one Nami, I can drop the Swain and just play Nami instead. And then I'll have Eldritch in. And uh, yeah, that'll look much better. Then I'll have Eldritch and uh, Eldritch and Mage trade in. Also, I dodged the Zephyr this round. I knew that person had a Zephyr. So I was able to dodge that. And uh, the hope is that I can get through this Kassadin. Unfortunately, the Kassadin three star is really, really strong. Kassadin's another unit that can just go infinite in these fights because he stacks up additional magic damage on every single auto attack. And it wasn't close. Kassadin does 12,000 damage. If you're curious about these rounds where like these two costs are putting out 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 damage, if that doesn't feel balanced well, it's because this is a terrible patch. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's a terrible patch. It's extremely unbalanced. The two cost units are way too strong. By the way, there's three Vexes. So I really should just buy the three Vexes and replace the Swain with that, but did not end up doing that. I am hitting some Rumbles. Um, and by the way, there's the Zareth. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. I'm on five Mordekaiser's six Rumbles. These are not critical units, but I'll pick them up. I wouldn't mind itemize, and that's six Mordekaisers. I'll also pick up the dummies. I do need to pick up charms. Again, all this stuff is pretty expensive. Uh, and I do need to put the Arcane Signifier on Zareth. There we go. And I will also put the Eldritch Emblem on someone. It doesn't really matter who I put the Eldritch Emblem on. Eldritch is, doesn't give any stats to the holder. It just provides the team-wide benefit. And I don't also don't even have the um, uh, Eldritch trait in just yet either. So yeah, still still need to do some work there. My two-star Mordekaiser was good for the early game, but does seem to be falling off a little bit now. If I could get three more Mords, that would be a really, really big deal. Uh, we did just use the Champion Send to get me a Zareth, though. And having the Zareth is definitely nice. Zareth's going to give me another source of damage. And uh, as I said, as I buy more charms, that unit's going to continue to get stronger. So this is a close fight. I was re I got Headwinder to come over and join me. And then the other teams also reinforced. It is Headwinder Syndra against the other team's Syndra. But fortunately, he was able to win that round. And that's big because we want to keep knocking health out of these other players in the lobby. It's actually a very tight lobby here. All right, there is the Nami. So I will play the Nami over the Nora for right now because it puts the Eldritch trait in play. And uh, now I need to get to level 9 so I can slot in that Nora to get in Mage trait as well. So uh, I do think my front line's a little on the shaky side, so I would not mind getting some more tank items right now. And then I would like to get items for Zareth as well, if I could. So for the moment, I'm holding, uh, I'm holding, what is it? Uh, I'm close to hitting like a lot of stuff. I've got the pairs on the Tom Kench, and then I'm on, what, six out of nine for the Mordekaiser three-star and the Rumble three-star. Not that either of them have any items right now. Probably should have put the Eldritch Emblem on the... Um, 
on the rumble because I might have gotten the uh, might have gotten the rumble three star as opposed to the blitzcrank three star is clearly not going to happen. Anyway, this is a reasonably close fight, but I do look like I'm stronger than this board. I'm not exactly sure what this person's playing. They have a smolder over there. Smolder is like barely even been played in this set because he's such a weak unit, but I'm sure that they will over uh, buff him to overpowered status soon enough. Anyway, yeah, I do think the best play is to get to level nine and put it in the Nora, and then I also have better odds to find Zareth there as well. Now, there is a Spear of Shojin on Emilio. I would love that. That would be awesome for me to get on the Xerath, but I do not expect to get that uh, Spear of Shojin on a five-cost unit. And sure enough, it gets grabbed pretty quickly. There's also none of the units I'm really looking for here. So I could potentially try to get a tank item. I think my preference, most of all, would be a tank item. But every single tank item gets grabbed. So at that point, I was like, well, I guess I might as well go ahead and take this jeweled gauntlet out of the options that are left over. It does suck being last pick on almost every carousel, <laughs> but uh, I'd rather be last pick and have 18 health than be first pick and have one health. So yeah, it is what it is. All right, so we're doing the gift rounds here. And uh, I believe Headwinder is going to choose the completed item anvil for this one uh, in this game that's, you know, as I said, pretty darn close here. So which one does he take? I think it's a completed item. There we go. And by the way, there's another Nora here. So, okay, I've got... Nora pair plus Tom Kench pair, so that's, you know, that's pretty good. Um, of course, Nora's not on the board, but she'll make three mage, and I, I like I said, I think my board is, is pretty good here. If I could just uh, finish two-starring some of these other units um, and then get to level nine, I think I'll be in good shape. The problem is everything is so expensive, right? Like, I need to get to level nine. I also need to buy, keep buying charms for Xerath. Um, that's what Xerath's uh, uh, special arcana ability is, by the way. Uh, Xerath is basically the... Um, what is it, the Al Shin back from set seven, the dragon one, but his ability is that he, uh, he, he deals additional damage based on buying charms. A certain percentage of his damage gets converted to true damage based on how many charms you've bought. Uh, so it's very worthwhile to grab those charms. And of course, in the late game, you want charms anyway, because the fights are close. Uh, this is the board that was really strong throughout the early game. This is the board that win streaked all throughout stage uh, two and three. But um, they just kind of fell apart here as the game went on. You see that uh, Galio gets stunned there briefly. But um, he's a vanguard, so his vanguard shield kicks in at 50% health. And that's enough for him to win that fight. And we actually knocked that team out. So yeah, they really, uh, they really um, bungled there. <laughs> <laughs> really bungled their middle game there for what it's worth. And I'll go ahead and put this rod on Zareth because why not? Uh, he will deal more damage. Of course, what I really need is mana generation on him. Uh, I'm going to get a uh, two components from Headwinder. I figured that because I um, had components, I might as well go ahead and take them. So I decide, you know what? I'll just go ahead and make the Gargoyle Stone Plate. That's pretty good to make on Tom. And I do think that getting more frontline is important here because the Mordekaiser definitely can't stand up alone, can't do, a, can't tank completely by himself. Alrighty, so we've got one more round for the minion round. I'd really like to win this round. Uh, I thought that I was probably going to be up against that Cassadin player. It was like 50-50 odds, but I thought that I'd be up against the Cassadin player here. So anyway, I'm going to shuffle over here a little bit. Turns out that I'm up against a different player. This player is running um, something that is not a reroll build, shockingly. They have Lucky Glove over here, and they actually have kind of a mixed board. They, they're running a Fiora plus Gwen plus Karma board, and then just playing like other expensive good units uh, with Preserver trait in there as well. And this board actually turns out to be a lot stronger than I thought. I, I actually don't have very good success against this board at all. I was kind of surprised at how poorly I did against this unit, but uh, it looks like they did quite well over there. And yeah, they actually shred my board pretty pretty good there. We had another team get knocked out, and unfortunately, Headwinder also lost. So even though we were at 18 health, we double lost and we went down to one health. We were kind of like, whoa, we we went down to one HP. Okay, that was that was fast. Um, a lot of these games have been ending really fast here in in set 12. I don't know if they like tinkered with the player damage in double up mode. Or if it's just that the game's really imbalanced right now, so there's like a lot of lopsided fights. But a lot of these double-up games have been ending really, really fast. Like, they barely get to stage 6 at all. Um, and I don't, haven't seen anything get to stage 7. Anyway, though, I did hit the 2-star Nora, so that's going to be really nice. So it's definitely the right play to level here, put in the Nora, and then just see what else I can do. I'd really like to get a new uh, a charm as well. Probably should have taken the Animate Bench here. Uh, increase your 5% odds, shop odds, uh, or is not going to help me that much. And then there's a Mordekaiser here. Yeah, I probably should have taken that Animate Bench option 
And I'm going to keep rolling here because then that Mordekaiser and Rumble would have come join my board. I think that would have been better. Also would like an item for Zareth here, but I don't have one. So I'm going to get some more frontline for my Tom Kench. And it looks like I'm up against the Syndra board here. Now, this person has three-star Syndra, three-star Cassiopeia, three-star Shivana. They're all uh, all of them two-cost units. They do have two-star Swain and two-star Nasus, though. So their, their frontline is quite beefy. Um, but again, they're still mostly playing through the Syndra. And then I guess also the Cassiopeia to some extent. Um, and this fight is going to be reasonably close, but then, oh, in comes their partner. I think I might be able to win 1v1 because it's very close, but I don't think I can quite beat both of the boards. So, yeah, it's a close loss. I'm pretty sure I would have won that without them reinforcing. Galio does 16,000 damage, but uh, it's not enough. Syndra wins again. Syndra wins every time, and that's going to be enough to wrap this one up. Um, these games have just not really been fun to play. Like, I want to play TFT because it's the start of a new set, which is always, like, when it, I'm, my interest in the set is at its highest rate when it comes out. But it's just really not fun to play. The game is literally just whoever hits Syndra three-star first wins the lobby. We've done a series of double-up games. Like, we did three the night that we played this one, and in all three games, whoever hits Syndra three first won every single time. Like, it's just not fun to have this happen. It's just like, who gets Syndra? They win, and everybody else loses. Like, where is the interesting thing in this comp? Like, that team, if you look at their itemization, it's not bad. It's actually quite good. But, like, they didn't even build any magic resistance shred in their team. Because Cinder just shreds, like, just gets the MR shred for you. Like, you don't have to itemize. A and, like, look at my board. I had a <laughs> I had a Radiant Ionic Spark and a Dragon's Claw. And it's just like, eh, Cinder just shreds right through it. You don't need to worry about magic resistance shred. She just does that automatically. Her ability will just hit the front line and everything gets shredded repeatedly. It's just... This unit's just so dumb. It's just so dumb, and it's not really fun playing. So I wanted to record a video, and I figured I'm probably not going to get this Galio uh, hero augment more than like one other time throughout the set. So I wanted to get some footage up, but this is rough. This is a really rough point, and uh, I don't know. I, I wish that they'd been able to hot fix this, but apparently there was some technical reason they couldn't do it. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Let's really, really, really hope the next patch is better because this one is a train wreck. Anyway, until then, take care, folks, and I'll see you again soon.